field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this should be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a hand of the multitude of the heavenly ghost praying to praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will for men. Now, where is my, where is my, uh, who's, be, who's long winded here? It's really long winded, but it sure is a beautiful Christmas story. Brother Dennis at our church sent it out. We don't know if anybody else got it. It's not easy to read, honey. It's it's very hard to read. No. Very hard. I need no. to read it. Brandon, would you want to read? <laughs> Donna. Can I read? Donna, would you, Donna will help me out. Donna. Donna. It's, it's very beautiful. Brother, Brother Dennis. I couldn't get through. It's, we got upset. I couldn't, I couldn't read it. <laughs> We've been reading it. <laughs> okay. Did anybody else get this letter from Brother Dennis? No. Oh, you mean I'm the only V out here around? Sit in my place if you like. That's it, Ron. It's really beautiful. Uh, let me tell you about the story here before she gets started with it. Y'all got to put yourself back into the scene of a man. Go ahead. I can't it's, get it out. It, it's very emotional. It's most. It's very beautiful, Donald, and it's very touching. You can't do it. Try it. Give it a shot. You already make me cry. The old man sat in his gas station on a cold Christmas Eve. He hadn't been anywhere in years since his wife had passed away. It was just another day to him. He didn't hate Christmas, just couldn't find a reason to celebrate. He was sitting there looking at the snow that had been falling for the last hour and wondering what it was all about when the door opened and a homeless man stepped through. Instead of throwing the man out, old George, as he was known by his customers, told the man to come and sit by the heater and warm up. Thank you, but I don't mean to intrude, said the stranger. I see you're busy. I'll just go. Not without something hot in your belly, George said. He turned and opened a wide mouth thermos and handed it to the stranger. It ain't much, but it's hot and tasty. Stew, made it myself. When you're done, there's coffee and it's fresh. Just at that moment, he heard the ding of the, of the driveway bell. Excuse me, be right back, George said. There in the driveway was an old 53 Chevy. The steam was rolling out of the front. The driver was panicked. Mister, can you help me, said the driver, with a deep Spanish accent. My wife is a child and my car is broken. George opened the hood. It was bad. The block looked cracked from the cold. The car was dead. You ain't going in this thing, George said as he turned away. But, mister, please help. The door of the office closed behind George as he went inside. He went to the office wall and got the keys to his old truck and went back outside. He walked around the building and opened the garage, started the truck, and drove it around to where the couple was waiting. Here, take my truck, he said. She ain't the best thing you've ever looked at, but she runs real good. <coughs> George helped put the woman in the truck and watched as it sped off into the night. He turned and walked back inside the office. Glad I gave him the truck. Their tires were shot too. That old truck has brand new. George thought he was talking to the stranger, but the man had gone. The thermos was on the desk, empty, with a used coffee cup beside it. Well, at least he got something in his belly, George thought. George went back outside to see if the old Chevy would start. It cranked slowly, but it started. He pulled it into the garage where the truck had been. He thought he would tinker with it for something to do. Christmas Eve meant no customers. He discovered that the block had been cracked. It was just the bottom hose on the radiator. Well, shoot, I can fix this, he said to himself. So he put a new one on. Those tires ain't going to get him through the winter either. He took the snow treads off his wife's old Lincoln. They were like new, and he wasn't going to drive the car anyway. As he was working, he heard shots being fired. He ran outside, and beside a police car, an officer lay on the cold ground, bleeding from the left shoulder. The officer moaned, please help me. George helped the officer inside as he remembered the training he received in the Army as a medic. He knew the wound needed attention. Pressure to stop the bleeding, he thought. The uniform company had been there that morning and had left a clean shop towels. He used those and duct tape to bind the wound. Hey, they say duct tape can fix anything, he said, trying to make the policeman feel at ease. Something for pain, George thought. All he had was the pills he used for his back. These ought to work. He put some water in a cup and gave the policeman the pills. You hang in there. I'm going to get you an ambulance. The phone was dead. Maybe I can get one of your buddies on that there talk box out in your car. He went out only to find that a bullet had gone into the dashboard, destroying the two-way radio. He went back in to find the policeman sitting up. Thanks, he said. 
said the officer. You could have left me there. The guy that shot me is still in the area. George sat down beside him. I would never leave an injured man, and in the Army I ain't going to leave you. George pulled back the bandage to check for bleeding. Looks worse than what it is. The bullet passed right through you. Good thing it missed the important stuff, though. I think with time you're going to be as right as rain. George got up and poured a cup of coffee. How do you take it, he asked. None for me, said the officer. Oh, you're going to drink this. Best in the city. Too bad I ain't got no donuts. The officer laughed and winced at the same time. The front door of the office flew open. In burst a young man with a gun. Give me all your cash. Do it now, the young man yelled. His hand was shaking, and George could tell that he had never done anything like this before. That's the guy that shot me, explained the officer. Son, why are you doing this, asked George. You need to put the cannon away. <laughs> Somebody else might get hurt. The young man was confused. Shut up, old man, or I'll shoot you too. Now give me the cash. The cop was reaching for his gun. Put that thing away, George, said the cop. We've got one too many in here now. He turned his attention to the young man. Son, it's Christmas Eve. If you need money, well then here. It ain't much, but it's all I got. Now put the pea shooter away. George pulled 150 out of his pocket and handed it to the young man, reaching for the barrel of the gun at the same time. The young man released his grip on the gun, fell to his knees, and began to cry. I'm not very good at this, am I? All I wanted was to buy something for my wife and son. If you want. I've lost my job. My rent is due. My car got repossessed last week. George handed the gun to the cop. Son, we all get in a bit of a squeeze now and then. The road gets hard sometimes, but we make it through the best we can. He got the young man to his feet and sat him down in the chair across from the cop. Sometimes we do stupid things. George handed the young man a cup of coffee. Being stupid is one of the things that makes us human. Coming in here with a gun ain't the answer. Now sit there and get warm and we'll sort this thing out. The man had stopped crying. He looked over at the cop. Sorry I shot you. It just went off. I'm sorry, officer. Shut up and drink your coffee, the cop said. George could hear the sounds of sirens outside. A police car and an ambulance skidded to a halt. <laughs> Two cops came through the door, guns drawn. Chuck, you okay? One of the cops asked the wounded officer. Not bad for a guy who took a bullet. How did you find me? G GPS locator in the car. Best thing since sliced bread. Who did this? The other cop asked as he approached the young man. Chuck answered him, I don't know. The guy ran off into the dark, just dropped his gun and ran. George and the young man both looked puzzled at each other. That guy worked here, the wounded cop continued. Yep, George said, just hired him this morning. Boy lost his job. The paramedics came in and loaded Chuck into the stretcher. The young man leaned over the wounded cop and whispered, why? Chuck just said, Merry Christmas, boy, and you too, George, and thanks for everything. Well, it looks like you got one doozy of a break there. That ought to solve some of your problems. George went into the back room and came out with a box. He pulled out a ring box. Here you go, something for the little woman. I don't think Martha would mind. She said it would come in handy someday. The young man looked inside to see the biggest diamond ring he ever saw. I can't take this, said the young man. It means something to you. And now it means something to you, replied George. I got my memories. That's all I need. George reached into the box again. An airplane, a car, and a truck appeared next. They were toys that the oil company had left for him to sell. Here's something for that little man of yours. The young man began to cry again as he handed back the 150 that the old man had handed him earlier. And what are you supposed to buy for with Christmas dinner with? You keep that too, George said. Now get home to your family. The young man turned with tears streaming out of his face. I'll be here in the morning for work if that job <coughs> offer is still good. No, nope, I'm closed Christmas Day, George said. See you the day after. George turned around to find that the stranger had returned. Where did you come from? I thought you left. I have been here. I have always been here since stranger. You say you don't celebrate Christmas. Why? Well, after my wife passed away, I just couldn't see what all the bother was. Putting up a tree, and it all seemed a waste of a good pine tree. Baking cookies like I used to with Martha just wasn't the same by myself. And besides, I was getting a little chubby. The stranger put his hand on George's shoulder. But you do celebrate the holiday, George. You gave me food and drink and warmed me when I was cold and hungry. The woman with child will bear a son, and he will become a great doctor. The policeman you help will go unsafe. Nineteen people from being killed by terrorists. The young man who tried to rob you will make you a rich man and not take any for himself. That is the spirit of the season, and you keep it as good as any man. George was taken aback by the stranger and what he said. How do you know this? asked the old man. Trust me, George, I have the inside track on this sort of thing. And when your days are done, you will be with Martha again. The stranger moved toward the door. If you will excuse me, George, I have to go now. I have to go home where there is a big celebration plan. 
George watched as the old leather jacket and the torn pants that the stranger was wearing turned into a white room, a golden light began to fill the room. You see, George, it's my birthday. Merry Christmas. George fell to his knees and replied, Happy birthday, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm.